Chad Dan. Uh, I have the pleasure of introducing a visiting professor, um, Professor Eric Orwall, professor of medicine at the Oregon Health and Sciences Center, and he's associate dean for clinical research in the School of Medicine at the Oregon Health and Science Center. Uh, Dr. Orwall is an active researcher. He's a world authority on bone health, over 250 publications in his uh, curriculum vitae. Uh, we welcome Dr. Orwall here to tell us about the issues of bone health in men, a disease that many people don't really associate with the male side. So Eric, welcome and thank you for coming. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. I couldn't help but notice that the life expectancy in BC was a few years um, longer than in the US, and so I've calculated that in the few days that I'm here, I'm going to live at least a couple minutes longer, and I've been, I've been sitting there thinking about how I'm going to spend those minutes, and you know, it's going to be good. It's going to be fine. So my job is to talk about uh, bone health and uh, specifically about osteoporosis. So I thought I'd start out with this slide, which graphically shows you what osteoporosis is. So on the, on the right-hand side of the slide, there is a cross-section of a leg bone, a femur. And um, a young, healthy person on the left side of that couplet and uh, an older person with osteoporosis on the right. And you can see that a hallmark of osteoporosis is bone loss. And you can imagine that the femur on the right is uh, less strong and more likely to fracture than the one on the left. On the left-hand side, the couple on the left-hand side, cross-sections of vertebra and the spine bones. And you know the, the vertebra are, are like cylinders that are stacked one on top of another to form your spine. We've got cross-sections there. The one on the left from a young, healthy person. The one on the right for some, from somebody with osteoporosis. A lot less bone there already begun to um, deform and uh, fracture. So the key to osteoporosis, two keys, bone loss and fractures um, as a result. This, uh, these are uh, what happens to people with osteoporosis, in this case a woman. Young woman, 1959, you can see totally normal, nice straight spine. 1986, you can see that she's begun to develop some fractures in her spine and begun to develop um, what's called medically uh, kyphosis. And on the right, the far right picture, uh, 1998, she's got advanced osteoporosis, multiple spine fractures, and she's also had a hip fracture, uh, which makes it very difficult for her um, to get around. Classic um, signs of osteoporosis. We associate osteoporosis with women for the most part, particularly postmenopausal women, and these sorts of changes in the shape of the back, in fact, are called uh, a dowager's hump because we see that so frequently in women. But in fact, left side. In fact, this happens in men as well. Let me show you some examples. This is a uh, profile of Benjamin Franklin that was done on shipboard when he was coming from France to the US to take part in the Constitutional Convention. There's a lot of pictures of Benjamin Franklin as a younger person where he is clearly uh, standing straight up, doesn't have this curvature of the spine. Uh, when he got to Philadelphia, he was a bit famous for a variety of reasons. One of those was because he was carried around the streets of Philadelphia in a litter. So four young strapping guys carried him around because he couldn't stand to ride on the cobblestone streets in a buggy because he had terrible back pain. And he thought that he had a bladder stone, but obviously I think that um, he had osteoporosis and vertebral fractures. Here's another example, Winston Churchill coming to New York, um, getting off the boat to plan the um, European campaign. Um, and you can see that he also has a kyphotic deformity, a bowing of the back. Uh, you can see his um, cigar there on his other hand, I think, is his brandy snifter. And maybe those have something to do with why I think he had uh, vertebral fractures. Another example, the last pope, you know, he had severe osteoporosis, multiple vertebral fractures. That's as straight as he uh, was able to stand in the later part of his life. And of course, he had a hip fracture uh, not too long before he died. And finally, uh, Ronald Reagan, who also had a variety of medical problems, but one of the last events in his life was a uh, hip fracture. 
So if you look around, there in fact is a lot, there are a lot of men um, with osteoporosis, and the, the statistics bear that out. This is a classic slide that many of us uh, see frequently, and it shows the increase in fracture rates with age, men on the left, women on the right, and you can see that in both men and women, the number of fractures increases dramatically with age. Now, the, the slope is a little steeper in um, women, it turns out, and the increase begins a little bit later in men than it does in women. And the fact that the slope's a little bit steeper, it begins a little later in women, and more importantly, the fact that women live longer and to the ages when fractures occur more frequently means that we see more women with osteoporosis. But um, men, if we live long enough, um, have a high risk of having fractures. For instance, this is the Dubbo osteoporosis um, epidemiology study. Uh, a lot of people in a town, in a city in Dubbo, were recruited and followed to see who would get fractures and how many fractures occurred. And let me show you here in men on the left-hand side, what this shows is, I'm going to just choose one of these lines, in a 60-year-old man who hasn't previously had a fracture, who lives to the life expectancy of 80 years old, has a 25% chance of having an osteoporotic fracture in his life. 25% after the age of 60. So those of us who hope to live beyond the age of 60 have a reasonable chance of experiencing an osteoporotic fracture. Nothing like a woman, a woman who has a 50% chance of having an osteoporotic fracture after the age of 60. What are those fractures? Uh, these are U.S. data um, over here. In the U.S., each year, 2 million fractures cost $17 billion. About 29% of all those fractures happen in men, 25% of the cost. This is the distribution of fractures in men in the U.S. About 14% are hip fractures, 27% spine fractures, 12% wrist, etc. But if you look at the proportion of the cost by fracture type, 72% of the cost is because of hip fracture. This is overwhelmingly the most serious uh, of the osteoporotic fractures. It causes the most disability, the most hospitalization. Um, this is a fracture you don't want to have. Um, it turns out that men are much more likely to die after a hip fracture, twice as likely to die from complications after a hip fracture um, as are women. <laughs> 